as you know there is a final project for this course and for the final project the main idea is you as a student will develop a research question and then you will try to answer that research question using some of the tools that you have learned in some of your prerequisite courses as well as some of the um, new methods that will be introduced in this particular course um, and, and therefore having some idea about some framework of how to create a research question or what are the frameworks of um, developing a research question is um, something important so for this particular discussion i'm simply going to follow this paper posing the research question not so simple <clears throat> so there are a couple of stages of development of a research question the first stage of obvious is obviously um, trying to get some understanding of what is it that you are interested about um, talk to your collaborators your supervisors try to figure out um, what general area um, attracts you say for example if you are someone who is interested about arthritis research maybe think about either making that arthritis as a main primary exposure of interest or outcome of interest and that then try to figure out what can be the other um, condition or treatment or outcome or other disease that can be uh, somewhat connect to, connect, connected to this particular arthritis research area and that will get you some understanding about what is it that you want to do and, and obviously you will be able to refine your ideals um, after talking with some of your collaborators, um, some of the um, classmates that you have in this particular cohort with myself um, and also you are free to talk with your supervisor uh, for some guidance about um, the general topic uh, that could be useful to work on. So generally speaking, you, you probably need to identify a good objective of a study or a good research question of a study uh, before you delve into um, the main research or the data analysis that you are uh, trying to do to answer that research question. So you can imagine if you do not have a good research question then developing the plan to answer that research question is also going to be hard and also um, for a research question that is not specific enough interpreting that research question can be also hard. Um, and in general this creates confusion all around like when you are uh, doing your research you are confused your readers are confused the reviewers are confused so uh, trying to be focused on developing a research question before you start start the analysis or research is always a good idea that's why literature review is um, always at the beginning of any research um, and also i mean it, it can waste a lot of time especially say for example for this course when you have only three months to develop an entire manuscript and then you are um, simply jumping around from one topic to another because you are thinking um, that this this is a research question that will give you uh, some Nobel Prize or the uh, work but uh, obviously uh, within this three month of work um, that can be quite difficult to achieve uh, so obviously you want to aim for something that is doable in this um, three months um, and of course uh, it's not that you, you will have three months is a lot of time at the end of this month you will have to submit a uh, basic uh, statistical analysis plan uh, and for that you will need to do some sort of basic analysis um, to answer your research question and the research question will be due um, before that week so 
try to aim for something that is manageable as a, as a project otherwise um, it can be pretty hard on you uh, especially because you are not only doing data analysis but you are also learning a lot of the different methods during this course all right so fortunately there are some frameworks that are available for defining a research question um, I should say good research question um, and there are many different variations of this framework um, so usually this is known as the PyCOT framework but uh, some people only use the PICO some people uses the PyCOTS and there are many variations uh, but let, let me just go through the basic um, components of this framework so this component starts with p that stands for population um, so that um, is useful to think about um, when you are trying to formulate a research question the target population for whom your research question is going to be generalized to um, and to some extent when you are trying to define your target population you are also thinking about the study sample based on which you are trying to make this this inference um, and um, when you are thinking about the study sample you are obviously thinking about the specific data sources um, so say for example you 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 want to do some research about um, say Australian population but if you do not have uh, access to that kind of data uh, that might be limiting to you uh, so in this particular course I will basically show you two different data sources one is the uh, CCHS data set which is the Canadian um, health survey component and the enhanced data set from the US CDC um, so particularly I choose these two data sets uh, for this particular class because you do not really need to wait for any ethics approval to work on these data sets um, through UBC library you can access the CCHS data set and through uh, US CDC website you can directly download the NHS data set so for this there are no uh, wait period uh, and you do not have to wait because we have such a short amount of time in this class we we just want to go straight to some specific population and then think about what can we do within that population say for example in this case um, we are trying to because of the limitation of the data source that we have available to us uh, we are trying to deal with uh, canadian adult population or if you are dealing with um, enhanced data then you will be dealing with a uh, u.s adult population um, in terms of the second component we also need to think about uh, what is the primary experimental condition that you want to test um, so it could be intervention it could be treatment or it could be some sort of exposure say for example how many um, if in your data set if you are only interested about um, osteoarthritis patients uh, which is um, a type of arthritis um, and say for example if you are familiar with arthritis research and uh, this would be something of interest to you um, and it is also a good idea to determine what what would be the counterfactual or opposite of your experimental condition uh, which is generally known as the standard of care or the control or no exposure type of condition so generally speaking patient without any osteoarthritis would be your comparator group outcome is basically something that is an effect um, after giving the intervention if you think of a causal question then you, you will also need to think about the temporality of um, the sequence uh, by which these intervention and outcomes are being measured you obviously want to pick a intervention or a exposure group that happens earlier than the outcome group say for example you want to figure out whether 
osteoarthritis patients are subject to uh, more cardiovascular disease or not if that is your question then uh, cardiovascular is the effect and then osteoarthritis patient is something that is um, your intervention and as a comparator group of course you can think of some patients who do not have arth osteoarthritis um, and this outcome is something that is very important and uh, in the next slide I'm going to talk about that um, so the following component is that time frame mostly this is about the follow-up um, which particular year you are dealing with say for example if you are dealing with uh, enhanced or CSHS data which particular cycles of data set um, you are dealing with uh, so in the language of CSHS or enhanced cycle means um, particular year of data um, and and within this time component you also need to think about when these measurements were taken say for example this enhanced or CCHS data set whatever we are using in this course these are cross-sectional data there is no way to establish the time frame there are some way um, I will show you during the class later on but mostly this is a observational data the questions are collected in one single time point uh, for a particular patient uh, so establishing this time uh, for what is happening earlier where the outcome is happening earlier than intervention or intervention is happening earlier than outcome is very difficult um, but you need to think about that as well like um, what is the time frame is it the 15 16 time frame or cycle you were thinking about or you are thinking about from 2010 to 2017 or something like that so you need to start think about the time frame um, and obviously if you are thinking about multi-year um, data set that means your analysis is going to be exponentiated so um, for for two years you need to deal with two different data sets separately for three years you need to deal with three different data sets, data sets separately and then combine so in the class I will also show um, I think in the next lab I will also show how to combine the data sources and all that uh, but that is also something you need to think about if you are trying to figure out a particular trend say for example how many of the uh, patients are getting um, this cardiovascular disease over time from 2010 to 2017 then obviously you need to deal with multi-year data sets uh, there is no way around it but if you are dealing with only one year data set in 2000 uh, 15 16 what was happening with the cardiovascular patients and how were they related to the osteoarthritis patients then you deal with only one year of data all right so settings is something that is optional but um, i'm just going to uh, discuss it here uh, because i think this is a important component uh, where you think about the inclusion and exclusion criteria to make your question more refined say for example when you are dealing with osteoarthritis patients this is your intervention and you are dealing with patients without osteoarthritis this is your control condition then when you are um, determining your comparator that means in this group people who have other kinds of arthritis there are many different kinds of arthritis but people who are exposed to other kinds of arthritis will be in your comparator group and you have to think hard about whether if you have osteoarthritis patients in one group and if you have uh, say rheumatoid arthritis patients in another group will that be a really fair comparison because you are you have only osteoarthritis patients here but in this group you will have many different arthritis patients as well as patients who have no arthritis so is that going to be a fair comparison so in this settings condition you can think about um, excluding patients who do not have any other kind of arthritis when you are trying to determine this uh, comparative group and that will refine your question um, and lead to less bias or re reduced bias all right so as i told you earlier that outcome is something important to think about um, because outcome is uh, something that you are going to use to compare these two conditions so 
first you will need to determine according to the question that we have built up in the previous slide the cardiovascular was the outcome and the osteoarthritis was the exposure so you need to first figure out how many of the uh, patients who are osteoarthritis patients um, develop these cardiovascular events and then you need to also figure out how many of the non osteoarthritis patients also develop these cardiovascular events and then you need to compare and contrast between two groups so to be able to compare you are just trying to compare the cardiovascular event rates in two of these groups right so it is very important to determine a very objective um, outcome if you are say for example um, often working with um, some sort of mental condition and your the instrument that you are using is how are you feeling about your uh, your um, wellness of health say for example and then even you are in the same condition um, different people might answer the same question differently but if you have a cardiovascular event say for example if you have a heart attack or not that is a very objective and that leaves very small amount of place for subjectivity right uh, because that is measurable that is quantifiable and um, obviously when you try to measure um, whether you have heart attack or not even if you change doctor the doctors will say uh, depending on their criteria whether that was a heart attack or not um, and they can probably tell you that uh, very precisely and of course the most important part is whether you have that information available so say for example when you are dealing with your cchs or enhanced data set you also need to figure out whether the outcome that you are determining whether they are recording that outcome and um, if possible so for this course we are just going to use some sort of uh, cross-sectional study so uh, timeline might not be uh, establishable and that will create some problem because we do not know whether our outcome is happening before our exposure or our exposure is actually happening before our outcome so uh, this is kind of unavoidable when we are dealing with uh, cross-sectional data but sometime you might be uh, lucky uh, because you might have some other questions that will help you determine this type of temporality so i will talk about that later but in general from a cross-sectional study this is very hard and often not doable all right so once you determine your high code framework components um, and then you need to think about um, whether this research is doable so that brings us to the final criteria so in this final criteria the first question is obviously is this question feasible uh, say so for example you might have a very rare exposure um, say so for example some specific component in your blood uh, that is measured but yeah, so little amount of people have that condition that you might end up uh, with a sample size that is very low uh, in your exposure group or that can even happen with your out outcome so it is a very good idea to do do your literature research to figure out whether the condition you are considering is rare or not and um, even if it's not rare do a pilot study to figure out whether how many of those uh, are captured in your study is this study interesting to whom this is interesting is it interesting for the researchers or the patients is it a originally enough idea is it novel um, is this question already answered in the literature then obviously if the same question is already answered in the literature there is no point of doing a research um, is this question ethical are you simply stealing your data set from your friends and using that for your research you, obviously that's not a very good idea and the last question is is it relevant is it contributing to um, some added benefit to the literature um, is it addressing something um, that is of current needs say for example if you're doing some sort of research um, about covid 19 um, no matter uh, how dull that question is but that question is relevant now because we are all facing uh, this uh, 
COVID-19 pandemic right now. All right, so to summarize, uh, first um, try to get some idea about um, what is your research context. Usually that comes from your background of what is it that interests you and um, you might want to rely on your support network, your uh, collaborator, your friends and your um, research um, supervisor um, to determine uh, what kind of research uh, area that you want to focus on and then what when you determine say for example I was interested in my example about arthritis research so based on arthritis I was trying to see what are the other disease areas that are somewhat relevant to arthritis and um, that gets affected by arthritis and I determined um, cardiovascular but there were many other um, outcomes that I could consider so at first, when you are trying to uh, determine your pie cut, uh, choose more than one in all of the components and then try to refine it um, and identify a pie cut uh, that um, you think you can do based on whether that is feasible or not um, and whether um, that is an interesting question or not. And that's where you will apply your final criteria to find out the feasibility of that type of uh, high court question that you are uh, proposing there are some additional reading that you can do but this is optional for this particular course thank you